welcome everyone to Nanotech 2014. It is a wonderful time. It is a wonderful time in the world of technology and omics has once again done an amazing job of bringing all the best intellects under one roof. It is amazing to stand here and share podium with such luminaries. I hope I want to give you the ride of nanotechnology frontiers as in the next few minutes. But as I show you, walk you through some of the frontier cutting edge things that have happened, my desire is that as we get out of the door, as we leave this conference, we are already innovating and make those technologies obsolete already, so that we push the frontier even more. I'll be talking on emerging nanotechnology trends. I want to give a disclaimer, I'm not endorsed by any third party affiliation. And that is the picture of my book, which I would be happy to sign for you. Some of the things that I want to talk about now is how nanotechnology is impacting real life, like it's happening now. The test is where the rubber beats the road. So what are those things? One is, one of the problems is explosive. For the people who are in battle, or even civilians, they are hit by explosives. So how nanomaterials have helped us uh, meet that challenge, how they can be used to detect explosives. Another area we'll talk about is, we talk about graphene, and of course that has uh, got a lot of attention as a honeycombed carbon, single layer atom, and we'll see how we have now been able to 3D print a nanowire that is made of graphene. So that's yet another frontier by nanotechnology. Another problem that we face as humanity is every now and then, we need to have a surgery to get some implant within us. And when we have an implant, whether it is a limb, a bone, anything, we always end up having infections and uh, because they are screwed on to the body. So I will talk about how nanotechnology is going to help us reduce infections with the surgical implants. Yet another frontier area in the area of human life and uh, life sciences is stem cell. For stem cell, uh, we need donor cells. We, we hear about it all the time. So nanotechnology is now done some amazing fr uh, job in bringing or having stem cell without the need of a donor cell. And that is another area I will talk about. One more is we know we have heard growing up everywhere that spider web is one of the strongest things, weight by weight, substance in, in the world. So take nanotechnology and take the strongest wire that is there, and that's what I'm going to show you how we are going to do that. We are going to take spider's web silk and then create a nano heart muscle with that. Yet another challenge is uh, uh, some people who lose their limbs and amputees, and amputation is done for various reasons, but when amputation is done, the idea is that the pain stops. But there have been numerous cases where amputees' pain continues to increase even after amputation. So we have found a good way of how to treat this with nanosensors, so we'll talk about that too. And then nanoelectronics, of course, we have electronics, so we, why shouldn't we have nanoelectronics? and take, take electronics and take it to the nanoscale. And we'll talk about how we can do 3D scanning and 3D printing to create nanoelectronics. The last area that I want to cover, of course, you know, when I was making the list, it was an endless list. I didn't know where to stop. So I had to stop after these eight areas. So the last one is that how we can take a human DNA and turn that into making nano circuits, using a human DNA as a nano wire and to make nano circuits out of it. So those are the eight exciting things. Let's dig into the details. So how is it that nanomaterial can detect explosives? If you look at the picture, you can see that it is a handheld device. And it has a scanner uh, which is 
it detects explosives. And this has been developed by University of Utah. And how they do is the detector has, is made with carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes are taken and a very microscopic layer is deposited on, uh, this microscopic layer is deposited on the scanner and that is able to detect the explosive. So what is inside that very slim layer? It is, it has nano electrodes in it. And how is it that we can make carbon nano uh, tubes with that. The nano electrodes and the carbon nanotubes are made by taking a polymer and breaking down bundles of nanotubes. And once they are broken down, they are so small, nanoscale, that they can actually be deposited as a layer and create on any material and then create a scanner. And it can detect explosive. So what happens in the back end? When you take the scanner, how, is, how does it detect the explosive? When there is a voltage between the electrodes, that el voltage creates certain current. And that current stays constant unless there is uh, explosive in the vicinity. And when the explosive is there, then the voltage changes. I found that very amazing given that uh, explosive is a danger to our society and humankind that we can use nanomaterials to create, solve the problem of explosives. So we talked about graphene. What is graphene? There's a lot of excitement because it has, it is nothing but a single, it's a single atom which is honeycombed. So it is only one carbon atom thick and it is a honeycomb structure. And that is what is graphene. And it is, uh, we want to make graphene based ICs because we want it to be the next frontier to conquer. And when we want to make chips with ICs, what do we need? We need to have a very precise patterning. We have to be able to take graphene, which, is, which has so many wonderful properties of carbon and more, we know that. And we also want to be able to um, pattern it at a nanoscale. So how can that be done? This work is done by Korea Electro Technology Research Institute. The picture that you see is a 3D printing pipette device that goes into a 3D printer. And what is done is graphene is taken and 3D printed to create nanowires. But it's not just take graphene and 3D print it to create a nanowire. It does something special to it. 3D printing generally uses powdered ink to create 3D objects. But this takes a liquid ink and stretches it. And what you see at the tip end of the micro pipette is where the uh, graphene uh, can be manipulated to come out as a nanowire. That is how we can fabricate nanowires with graphene. So we, uh, I, I promised you I'll talk about surgical implants and how we can reduce infection. One of the biggest problem in surgical inf implants is that the site implants are screwed on and they get infected. How do we fix it? we should be able to find a nanotechnology solution to that. The picture that you see, this is a work that's done by Northeastern University. Let me explain that a little more. Uh, if we use the same implant, the same material, let's say ceramic, if we break down that material into a nano-sized form, so rather than taking a big ceramic, but we powder it, make it small enough to make it nano-sized, what happens? The body, it turns out that the bone and the muscle is naturally like a nano-sized. So when you introduce nano-sized implant material onto the nano-sized body itself, then the body is fooled into thinking that it is part of its own body. And like a Velcro, if you were to snap two parts of the Velcro together, if they did not have the matching grain, it wouldn't work. So that is the key. So by mimicking the nanoscale, we are able to uh, prevent infection. And how, how, what, what is done? If you see inside the body, you have nanoscale implant. And then when the bacterial, uh, which are also nanoscale, they hit the bacterial cell. When they hit the implant, they just fall off 
its spiky edges, and they therefore they cannot infect it. So this is an amazing development. This work came from Northeastern University. What you see here is that there are 96 little little containers. It's a it's a well. It's a plate which has 96 wells in it, and in those wells there were different concentrations of nanoparticles that were put in those cells, and then the treatment for bacteria was tested for each of those. When you see the strong glow, you can see some part of the cells are strong glow, some part of them are not. The strong glow shows that there is a stronger bacteria presence over there. So this ascertains <coughs> test and confirms that having more nanoparticles gives us a greater ability to fight infection or to prevent infection. So that's good news for having those that have to have surgical implants. You know, we do stem cell therapy. You must have heard that it is an upcoming thing, but there are a lot of complications with it. Some of the complications that works are because we take a donor cell, our body is not used to having anything from outside, it rejects it. Each body is unique at certain level, and therefore, there are a lot of complications that we face with stem cell therapy. So how can nanotechnology fix that? So this is very interesting. How does a nano, a stem cell therapy work? The picture that you see, this is by North Carolina State Institute as well as uh, Cedar sinai Heart Institute. They have uh, created the solution. And if you look at the stem cell therapy, how it works is it takes some healing stem cells and it brings it to the injured tissue. There is an injury, there is a uh, problem, there are some cells that are injured. On the other hand, we have stem cells which are I have the ability to provide therapy. So you bring the cells close to the cells in need. How close that matching is done is a solution. But today, that matching, that mating is inefficient. Our external uh, stem cells get rejected. Those within the body are far away. They, it is not easy to bring them together at the same place. So this uh, solution, what does it do? It is very, it's really very neat. It, all it does is it takes the antibodies, the nanocells basically, and it magnetizes them. So by applying, making the nanocell magnetic with two different uh, polarities, they act as a matchmaker. So they are attracted to each other. And that is how we bring them together. And this solution is called MagBise, which is a short form for magnetic bipolar cell engager. And this has an iron platform. Why iron? Of course, we, because if you want to magnetize, you have to have iron platform, as you can see in the picture. And it has two different kind of antibodies. The first kind is that targets the stem cells, body's own stem cells after a heart attack. And the second kind it targets the injured tissue. In this case, it could be a heart muscle. And by bringing the patient's own stem cell, his own stem cell from his body, to the cells that need repair, there is no rejection because these are its own body cell cell. So there is no problem of having a donor cell from an outside uh, source which our body can reject. So this is a neat way by which stem cell therapy can get a boost with nanotechnology. Now here, what you see, this is a work by National high magnetic field laboratory in Florida. And they have developed nano heart muscle, which is based on uh, spider web silk. So um, uh, it is heart, it is a muscle, and it is nano sized. And we are going to use it by taking a web of a spider. Except, what do you do with it? So we know that spider web itself is one of the strongest materials, you know, weight by weight. And we coat it with carbon nanotubes. And once we coat it with carbon nanotubes, it makes it three times stronger than it already is. And so imagine something that is very strong. And then we use it with a heartbeat monitor and a piston. And it was found that when we can use it with a heartbeat monitor and a piston, it can raise up to 35 milligrams of weight, which is a lot, and electric current. And it can also, the other thing that nanotube coating does is it makes it conducting. By making it conductive, now you can put current through it and make it travel. 
anything that you can put current through, you can control. So electricity gives us control of a biological entity. And the electric current after this treatment uh, uh, could make it, the electric current that is within it could make it contract like a heart muscle. So we have what are, what is a spider web silk? We coated it with carbon nanotube. We can pass electricity through it and we can make it contract like a heart muscle. And what do we do with it? We use it to treat people with heart conditions. And so this is one of the breakthrough which impacts our life directly. Uh, let's talk about amputees in a different way. Um, when we have, um, uh, there are many improvised explosive devices that are, they are not only in the battlefield but also in other areas. Some people from Navy or other parts of defense step on it or they get hurt and they have to be amputed because part of their limb is blown off. It was found that when IED related amputees uh, even after the, the whole idea, now we are not talking about diabetic uh, or other such amputations here. We are not talking about a disease that progressively deteriorated our body and we had to ampute. We are talking about IED related uh, amputees who have lost their limbs because of an explosive device. It was found that even after they were amputed, they were finding pain. And it, there, uh, when they saw, they found that the bone would grow. And the whole idea of amputation is to stop bone growth and to seal it off. The fact that they were growing bone, it was causing pain. And multiple amputations had it to be done. So this solution, which came from US Naval Research Lab, uh, what you see on the left, what it does is it finds out what is the root cause. Why is that amputee having this problem? And how, how does it find out the root cause? Because once you find the root cause, you can fix it. And it finds it with nanosensor. How does that work? So in this case, they said, OK, we are going to see um, a secretion of a body. So they uh, saw that protein was secreted. But what, there is a bigger uh, thing behind it. There's a bigger um, uh, explanation behind it. We know that how our body, uh, different organs talk to each other is by secretions. So when we eat something, our body, our pancreas knows how to secrete insulin. When a certain, uh, a certain thing grows high in the body, the next organ knows to react and to do certain things. So this signal mechanism that we do by talking to each other or by using electrical signals, the body does by raising the level of its secretions. It was found that there was protein secretions in these people and these um, people who were amputees due to IED. Not only that, when the array was used, and we had to use a specific um, uh, uh, sensor array, and in this case, a protein-specific nanosensor array was used, because when you're looking for protein, you have to uh, put in something different than if you were looking for some other uh, secretion. When, and the picture that you see is a microscopic color slip, and you can image it in real time. So from outside, you can see every time the brightness of the sensor will change with the amount of protein secretion if you have put in the protein-based nanosensor. And it was found that the protein secretion is in bursts in those, in those amputees. And once you know the problem, you can fix it. So now that they know what the problem is, they can actually go and treat that patient. Because although uh, secretion of protein is a normal activity, but having it in bursts like that was a signal of a problem with the IED related amputees. So this is another way by which nanotechnology is helping people with their lives. We want to talk about nanoelectronics because everything is electronics and if we are going to replace every electronics today with nanoelectronics, then it will have to be nanoscale. And that brings us down to the very basic of uh, what the semiconductor nanoparticle will look like. And what you see here is a scanned uh, substrate. So you can 3D scan and you can 3D print a semiconducting device. So there are five different materials, as you can see. And this is by Princeton University. And the scanned substrate is scanned and then printed. 
So, that is how you can actually scan it. Today, we take photocopy of papers and this is scanning and 3D printing nanoparticles. So, that is very exciting. Another area is making human DNA and of course, we can go on and on, but I want to thank you very much for this opportunity to talk about exciting discoveries and like I said, we should go out and immediately make them obsolete. Thank you very much.